Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from Central Europe here in Hungary, close to the Danube River. I hope everybody is having a great weekend so far. Hi, Pachu. Hi, Nyang Ki Kim Yuin. Welcome to this class. Hi, Kyber. All right, everyone. This class, speaking part three, finishing this week strong. Materials as usual coming from our websites, aehelp.com for academic, I-E-L-T-S, and G-I-E-L-T-S, help. For the general version of the test, this is a speaking class, so make sure you speak. Don't just watch, don't just write, but speak as well. Hi, Cigar, good to see a member. Hi, Shang Hyung, in class. Um, yeah, repeat, repeat questions, repeat answers. All right, students, uh, when you're joining our websites, look for these websites online. This is our academic, aehelp.com. That big red button, click that join now button to get our premium package. And for the general IELTS, click that big red button to get our premium package. There are lots of goodies when you join our full course, including over 100 hours of video lessons, a fully interactive course, and six original practice tests, all of which for the academic, you can now also access with our new app, Academic IELTS Help. That's the name of the app. Look for our logo in your Apple and Play Store. Uh, it's both on the Android and iOS. If you have questions, comments, concerns, uh, do not be shy. Hi, MRG. Hi, Job Kaur. Hi, Rehan. Good to see more members. Uh, if you have questions, send me an email about the IELTS or about our products. Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Uh, why am I doing what? A <laughs> student is asking. It's not clear. You have to be more specific. Um, all right, students. Speaking part three today. This is the last class for this week. And just a reminder that... Uh, the next class will be on Thursday. Usually we start up Wednesday, but this time our next class will be on next week, Thursday. So just an important announcement, okay? So after today's class, the next or next week's class will start on Thursday the 15th of August. So mark it in your calendar, keep it in mind. All right, let's get into today's lesson. Uh, why Amarjeet? Um, because I'm traveling away and I won't be back in my office until uh, Wednesday late in the evening. So that's why it's going to be Thursday, Amarjeet. All right, so uh, here we go. Uh, we're focusing on part three, speaking section. Speaking section has three parts. Okay, part three is the last part. It's the most challenging part, arguably. Part two is quite challenging as well. So uh, let's warm up a little bit our speaking muscles before we get into part three. Uh, just with some examiner questions. Give me some nice answers, students. So here's the first question. Uh, this is very, very common. The examiner will ask you this. Uh, what is your full name? What is your full name? Practice answering this so that you can give a quick, fluent, clear, smooth, polite, natural answer. My name is Sukhdeep Singh Mukar. And what should I call you, Sukhdeep Singh Mukar? You should include that. So even if you just 
give it in a very quick, concise way like that, Suk, you should should include what I should call you because that's always the next question by the examiner. Okay, Hang Nguyen says, my full name is Hang Nguyen Thi Thu. You can call me by my first name, Hang. Very good. Yeah, so just always say that because they usually ask. Amarjeet says, my complete name is Amarjeet Singh. Please just call me Amar. Very good. Okay, Roshni Kunte says, my given name is Roshni and surname is Kunte. Please call me by my first name, Roshni. Very good. That works. Okay, nice. It's a different way. Okay. Yuya says, my first name is Yuya and my family name is Matsushita. Please call me Yuya. Okay, Yuya, from Japan. Nice. Yujin, also from Japan. Hi. All right. Uh, Sagar Modi says, my name is Sagar Modi. You can call me Sagar. Very good. Yeah, so you can keep it concise. You can be a little bit more fancy. Try different ways when you're practicing for the exam so you sound natural, okay? Um, my surname is McLeod. And my given name is uh, Thomas. Please call me by my nickname, Tom. I'm just making this up, students, this name. I'm always trying to give you some new names, all right? So... Here we go. Uh, repeat after me. What is your full name? My surname is McLeod and my given name is Thomas. Please call me by my nickname, Tom. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. couple of icebreakers. These are very, very common. What do you like to do after work or school? Give me a nice answer for this one. What do you like to do after work or school? It's kind of like asking what do you like to do in your free time, but you never know. Maybe some of you go to a job after school, for example, or maybe some of you attend a kind of a club of some sorts or vocational training um, like um, English classes. So there's a lot of different answers. Kyber says, well, after a lot of uh studying at school i love to relax uh in my bedroom like on wednesday i had uh like wednesday i read for at least two three hours laying down in my bed something like that kyber you have a little bit of repetition there and you don't need hard after a lot for studying okay snajiv saini says i'm very keen on spending the time with my friends and every time, whenever I'm free from my academic work, I like to go on outings with them. Like last Thursday evening, we went to the park and had a picnic. Okay, Sanjiv, throw in a little smooth flowing example there. Yuya says, after work, I like to spend my time at home rather than going out. And what do you like to do at home, Yuya? Can you throw another sentence at me so I can give you a better band score? Mariam Zahid says, after work, I like to take a short nap at home. It helps me relax from my tiring job. Not uh, tiresome, Mariam. Yeah, that's okay. I think it means different than what you want. It works, but I don't think it has the same meaning. Uh, Shang Hung Tsai says, I usually go to work out after uh, my job to release and strengthen, to relax and strengthen my body. It is very helpful after sitting in the chair all day, sitting in the office chair all day. Okay, some good answers there, students. All right, obviously some honest answers. Uh, be ready with these. Okay. So after a tough day at the office, I like to hit the gym for an hour or so. Not only to unwind, but also to be healthy after 
sitting for most of the day uh, at my computer. In fact, just had a great workout yesterday. for 90 minutes. Okay, just like that, all right? Again, uh, it's very clever. I noticed that a lot of you are paying careful attention to these lessons and including quantitative language, visible language, good explanation, good detail. That's what you need for those high, high band scores in the speaking section. Uh, here we go. Repeat after me. What do you like to do after work or school? After a tough day at the office, I'm paraphrasing, I like to hit the gym for an hour or so, not only to unwind, but also to be healthy after sitting for most of the day at my computer. In fact, I just had a great workout yesterday for about 90 minutes. Okay, some good quantitative language some good explanation of why I do it. And I'm speaking directly to the question of what I'm doing after work, okay? Not too little, not too much, just right, okay? Maybe some of you are familiar with the uh, story or the fable of Goldilocks visits the home of the three bears and always the little bears uh, belongings are the best and food is the best because the soup that Mama bear has is too cold. Papa bears is too hot. Baby bears is just right. So that's the idea in the speaking section. You want to find that happy middle ground with good fluency. Answer, explain, example. Okay. Here we go. Next question. One more icebreaker to get your mind and your muscles of the face and tongue warmed up. What did you do at the weekend? What did you do at the weekend? Kyber says, last Saturday, we went to a place called Carte. Now it's a large country estate about 15 minutes from my house. They have a large park and a river set in a mature garden, and it's full of different types of small animals. The most interesting aspect is they have a walkway across the river so people can get from one side of the other one side of the park to the other quickly okay kyber avoid you avoid thing always anytime kyber you catch yourself typing or saying the word thing or you stop yourself and replace it instead of thing aspect instead of you people okay important all right Jatinder Paul says, on Saturday, I visited a multiplex in order to watch a Punjabi movie, which is called, sorry, I'll get you back there, Jatinder, which is called Ardaas. On Sunday, I mostly relaxed at home to break the monotonous schedule. Mm, that doesn't make sense, Jatinder, because relaxing at home sounds monotonous, Okay. So on Sunday, I made some ice cream to break the monotonous uh, schedule of just relaxing at home. That would make more sense, Jatinder. Uh, if you're just chilling out at home relaxing, that sounds monotonous. Mono students means one. When you see that prefix, mono, it means one. And then tone, the tone of it, right? It's a one tone, Mo monotonous, okay? Yuya says, I went to Korea last weekend to catch up with my friends I made throughout my travels. It was so much fun and a great opportunity to hang out with them. Yuya, what did you do with them? Your second half is kind of repeating the first half. Rather that, Yuya, say what you actually did. So Yuya, something like this. I went to Korea last weekend to catch up with my friends I made uh, during my travels. It was a lot of fun joining them for a barbecue and a little bit of soccer. Okay, something like that will get you more points, more detail, more depth, always. All right. 
Xing Hung says, as I mentioned before, I went to the gym in the morning on Saturday and I spent time with family having dinner on Sunday. I will go to church in the morning and then read books in the afternoon. Okay, Shang Hung, yeah, so that's given that today is Saturday, right? So careful about that if your exam um, is uh, on Saturday. Um, here, it's what did you do at the weekend? So it is past tense. It's not what will you do. So be careful, Shang Hung. You do have to talk about the past weekend, not the future weekend, all right? Here we go. So on Saturday, I met up with some friends for a dinner and a movie. We watched the new Spider-Man flick together. Which was quite exciting. And then on Sunday, my family and me went to the park for a big hike and to get some fresh air. There we go. All right, just kind of visualizing and making that up. Here we go, students. Repeat after me. What did you do at the weekend? On Saturday, I met up with some friends for a dinner and a movie. We watched the new Spider-Man flick together, which was quite exciting. And then on Sunday, my family and me went to the park for a big hike and to get some fresh air. Students, again, notice... A couple of interesting points. So the question says weekend. I break that in two days, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Also, I'm using phrasal verbs. I met up with some friends. I'm using details for dinner and movie. Then I explain the movie. We watch the new Spider-Man flick. I throw in a little bit of colloquial rich vocabulary and then I transition into an adjective clause, which was quite exciting. Adverb of manner. Okay. And then on Sunday, my family and me went to the park. Throughout, I'm really careful with my tense. Okay. Met up. Went to. Okay. Um, so really careful making sure that I'm staying in the past. Watched. Right. Now, as I say that, here I use the different tense, so maybe I'll change this to got. Although it was correct, emphasizing the past, and got some fresh air. All right? Pay attention to those details. Okay, students, so, yeah, Vivek, using my family and I is absolutely okay. Absolutely. Okay. Now we're going to go to part three. So this lesson is focusing on part three. For part three, uh, there are some important points to pay attention to. Okay. In part three, make sure you understand the question before you begin to answer. A lot of students are nervous. They're not paying attention to the question and they're talking off topic. To get a high band score for part three, it's true for part two also in part one, but here I'm emphasizing part three. For part three, your answers must be specific to the question that is asked. Make sure to focus on the question specifically okay a take note of the topic and controlling idea 
and B, visualize what you are about to say. Here's a little hint. Think of what 9 from 10 people would likely respond. Okay, let's go for this first question. So after you're done your cue card, your part two, your examiner will say, okay, that is the end of part two. Uh, please pass back the card with the questions, the note paper. Now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Pay very careful attention there. When the examiner says related to the topic of part two, they mean that it's connected. Okay, so there's a connection between part two and part three. Use that. It helps you to increase your band score. Okay, so use that. All right. Educational Guruji is asking, it is said that our answers should be different from other people's. Yes, educational guru, but it doesn't have to be unique or strange. It just has to be said differently. So different answers doesn't mean that the answers have to be strange or unique, Guruji. It just means that it has to sound natural, okay, natural. All right, so let's get into this uh, part three. The examiner says, okay, let's talk about seeking help. Okay. When you hear that, immediately you should think about some ideas. You should start to visualize. Yes, Anish, it is okay to use idioms as long as you use them correctly. If you use idioms correctly, they make your score go up a bit. If you use them wrong, they make your score go down a lot. So it's a very risky move. You don't have to use them. Just remember, if you use idioms incorrectly, your score plummets. It goes down because it makes your language very confusing. Okay. All right, students, let's crack into this. Here we go. Um, first question, why is it important to help people in times of need? That one, why is it important to help people in times of need. Pachu says it is important to help people in times of need because it boosts their happiness and gives them confidence. For example, in case of poor people, we can help them by donating some money, food, and clothes, also for an emergency or disaster, and people will feel better about themselves. All right. Taylor, send me um, an email on that. That's a lengthy uh, detour, and I don't want to go down that road right now. Okay. Uh, so Gott is asking, is it good to prepare templates? Um, no. It's good to learn expressions and phrases, but it's not good to prepare templates. Uh, you will not do well. Uh, Jatinder says, the major reason for helping others in time of need is it's the humane thing for a person to do. In case a person doesn't help others in dire situations, he may lose trust among them. Very good, Jatender. A couple of word choice mistakes and grammar mistakes, but I corrected that. So take note, it's at 24 minutes, Jatender, in the lesson. You can review that later on the channel, okay? Uh, for Dob says, because it is humane to help others and be ready for those people when they need assistance. Uh, I helped a blind man to find his way to the nearest park just the other day. Yeah, for Dobbs, very good. Okay, nice smooth flowing example. For Dobbs, the beginning there's a little bit awkward, so I'll, let me try that again. So, because it is humane, people should always be ready to help those who are in peril. As for myself, I helped a blind man find his way to the nearest park. That's the right way for Dobbs. Okay, take note of that. Okay. All right. 
So, Nadej Ari says, personally, uh, giving a helping hand. Oh, I love the expression, uh, Nadej. So, personally, giving a helping hand is vital um, because when people need assistance and they are helped, it makes them happy and boosts morale. Very good. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, it is vital to give a helping hand to others in times of need as this is humane and boosts morale. Okay, it makes people feel happy. That was good. Some nice word and word choices there by some uh, students. To be more precise, humans are social creatures and one of our great survival advantages is that we help each other out. Just the other day, I took a couple of heavy bags of groceries back to an elderly lady's house. Okay, so I'm drawing from some of your great concepts and answers and putting it together for you here. Uh, repeat after me. It is vital to give a helping hand to others in times of need as this is humane and boosts morale. To be more precise, humans are social creatures and one of our great survival advantages is that we help each other out. Just the other day, I took a couple of heavy bags of groceries back to an elderly lady's house. Okay, now in part three, be ready for these follow-up questions. So part three is a conversation style part of the interview on a, the specific topic of part two. So here, the follow-up question is, what may be the consequences of not helping? So what may be the consequences of not helping? Okay. Now, while you think about some answers, if some of you don't understand the word consequences, consequences means negative results, okay, then you might ask something like, uh, just to be clear, you are asking about the negative results of not helping. Okay. Now, the examiner might not answer you with a yes or a no if you do that. So if you don't understand the word consequences and you try to kind of guess what the examiner is asking, then you can say, just to be clear, you are asking about the negative results of not helping. They might not say yes or no. They might, if you're lucky. But if you watch their reaction, you might see a little nod or a little human reaction that will give you confidence that that is what they are asking or the opposite where you get like a really weird look like, uh, um, and then that's not what they're asking. And they might just jump to the next question if you ask them something completely different. So that's a good strategy to make sure that you and the examiner are on the same page. Okay. So again, what may be the consequences of not helping? Okay. Jod Singh says, if we don't help each other, which we should, we're not doing justice for humanity and it can ruin another person's life. Where with assistance, it can be saved. Jod, do not switch to you and your in the middle 
of your response. It's not a good idea. Suk Makar says, there may be great chaos as nobody is complete in themselves. So it is better to help each other out. Uh, Suk, yeah, I'm on the same page as you. What do you mean by great chaos? What do you mean by nobody's perfect? Okay. Yuya says, off the top of my head, if I don't help people who need it, they might think I'm not cooperative. Okay, Yuya, but what's the negative consequence? So Yuya, off the top of my head is an okay idiom, but I'm not going to give you points just for that because it's, first of all, it's not an idiom that's connected with this question. So you're just using that because you memorized it, which is okay. You're sounding natural, but I can't give you a band seven or eight or a nine for just using an idiom like that. Now you're saying if I don't help people who need it, don't repeat the word help, Yuya, who need it, they may think I'm not cooperative. Okay. So what's the negative result of that, Yuya? So they might think I'm not cooperative and they will not help me in the future when I need them. Okay. So, and then maybe give an example. So go into more detail. Make sure that your answers are clear. All right. Tran Labao Nook says, there are many severe consequences of not helping out. Not only will people be criticized severely, um, but they may be shunned and isolated. Yeah, absolutely, Trenly. So shunned means ignored and isolated means um, pushed away from social situations. Okay. All right. Um, another uh, with the Chinese characters. Sorry, I can't read that. In my opinion, it will bring about a feeling of guilt. Um, this is because of a basic moral standard in society. If we don't help people in need, we may not meet the expectations of society and we may even be punished by law. Right? Okay. Good. All right. Some good answers. Think them through, students. If you can't think of an answer right away, you may want to start with something like, hmm, that's a tricky question. There are numerous negative outcomes to ignoring people in times of trouble. Firstly, that individual may experience mental or physical trauma as well the person who could have helped will likely feel guilt and may even be punished by law such as not calling, such as going to jail for not calling an ambulance for an injured child. Okay. All right. So I'm definitely taking it up another notch, but that is the level of detail and creativity that will surely earn you that band nine. Also, students, I realize that you're going, whoa, Adrian, really? I need to speak like that? Yes and no. Uh, here, I'm also increasing your vocabulary by giving you some words that you might not use so commonly. So when you see these words, write them down in your vocabulary book, okay? Here we go. Repeat after me. Hmm. That's a tricky question. 
There are numerous negative outcomes to ignoring people in times of trouble. Firstly, that individual may experience mental or physical trauma. As well, the person who could have helped will likely feel guilt and may even be punished by law, such as going to jail for not calling an ambulance for an injured child. Okay, so again, answer, explanation, example, using rich vocabulary and complex language. Notice the have helped, will likely. Okay, so some fairly fancy present perfect with the adjective clause, the person who could have helped. Okay, so it's condition with present perfect. Practice these complex grammar forms. All right, here we go. Next question. What are some common situations where people seek help from others? So again, visualize, think about yourself, think about movies, those stereotypical situations. Hint, hint, that's a nice synonym for common situations, stereotypical, okay? Trauma means injury, okay? Or means an injury, a problem. All right, um, what are some common situations where people seek help from others? Visualize, think of cliche, think of stereotypes. Let's see what you come up with. Here we go. And again, repeat your fellow students as well. Some of them have some great ideas. Pachu says, well, there are a few common situations where people seek help, such as in case of money scarcity, repair and maintenance of electronic gadgets, and also for mental depression, emotional support. Sure, yeah, that's okay, Pachu. That's not bad. Um, those work. Uh, there are uh, some kind of very typical situations that should come to mind when you're visualizing this. Cigar New Pain says financial crisis. That's great. Cigar, put that into a full sentence. Okay. Juan Pablo Avila says common situations when individuals usually look for help are emergencies like car accidents, burglary, crimes on the street. Just last month, I witnessed a car accident on the highway Immediately, we called 911 or 991. Maybe Juan Pablo, it's different in your area. In North America, the emergency number is 911. Hafsa Rasul says, when they are about uh, to sink in water, uh, Hafsa, when a person's sinking in water, um, they're drowning. Okay, that's very clever. That's a common situation. Just make sure you know the correct word. Hafsa, if you say they're sinking, the examiner will be like, okay, I get what you're saying, but that's not natural English. Um, so when they're drowning, drowning, or they have a car problem. Yeah, so um, stereotypical circumstances. Where people cry for help are incidences of drowning or car troubles. Just last month, I stopped on the highway to help a an older lady change her flat tire okay yeah sure that works um so remember the word hafsa drowning okay? the verb is drowning so when people are drowning uh hopefully that will never happen or you'll never see something like that it's absolutely scary and terrible but the correct word is drowning drowning is when we're sinking in water and we can't breathe so 
Stereotypical means common. It's a nice synonym. Circumstances means situation. So stereotypical circumstances. Repeat after me. Three, two, one. Stereotypical circumstances where people cry for help are incidences of drowning or car troubles. Just last month, I stopped on the highway to help an older lady change her flat tire. Now, when the question has an S, what are common situations? Make sure that you give at least two. Okay, two is enough, but give at least two. Make sure that they're clear. All right. Okay. All right. So MD Thosef Ali says there are many situations where people need help, like during road accidents, uh, floods. Um, being late for meetings. The other day, I uh, dropped a man off at his office uh, on my way to the grocery store because he was in a panic to get to a meeting. Okay, good. A couple of corrections there, uh, Tosef. Uh, again, check the time, 41 minutes. You can come back and figure out where I corrected uh, your comment in real time. Okay, one more. Bayou Adi says, generally speaking, people seek help in emergency situations. However, in my country, um, dealing with money becomes a top reason for seeking assistance. Okay. Bayou, careful with word repetition. Avoid the word things. Thanks for the feedback, MD Tosef. Makes me feel good that you're listening. Um, so by you, um, avoid the word things and avoid word repetition. Okay. The end of your comment is a little bit awkward. All right. Follow up question. Which resources may be particularly useful in these kinds of situations? Okay. Which resources may be particularly useful in these kinds of situations? Give me a nice answer. Harman Hafsa, thanks for getting back to me. It's good students when you confirm what I'm giving you as advice because then I know you're listening. Um, Moru, uh, Moria, uh, K. Moria. Yeah, technology is a good answer. Just put it into a sentence, okay? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking there, Jagjit, about cue cards being changed in November. If you can be more specific or send me an email. As far as I know, cue cards are here to stay um, because that has a valuable part to the speaking assessment. Ferdov says there are various types of resources that um, can be needed to help others, like a first aid kit, water. Of course, uh, the availability to uh, artificially massage the heart. Yeah, for Dobbs, careful again with um, trying to translate from your own language or uh, describing without knowing. It's called CPR, okay? So where you're pumping the person's heart and breathing for them, it's called CPR, cardio... I don't even know what that acronym means. It's cardio... Um, something respiration but cpr we just shorten it to cpr for dobs cpr okay um roshni kunte says when people suffer from harrowing situations like suffering through depression they require vital help to stabilize their mind and can suggest good psychiatrist okay so the psychiatrist is the resource start with that one right start with that one Okay, so what most of you are saying is that certain types of equipment, so certain types of equipment like a first aid kit in case of injury or a mobile phone to call emergency services can be useful. As well as knowledge 
of how to help people like CPR in case of drowning as I previously mentioned or knowing the Heimlich um, if someone is choking. Okay. There we go. Um, so CPR, that's a good word to know. So for Dobbs, I'm glad that you brought up that situation. Uh, CPR, if somebody uh, cannot uh, breathe and their heart stopped in case of drowning, CPR is where they pump and massage the heart and they do the artificial breathing for the person. Okay, Heimlich maneuver is if somebody is choking on a piece of food, potato or a steak, and that's where somebody gets behind them and they push under the abdomen to try to regurgitate what is lodged in the... Um, esophagus. So uh, those are good words to know in English. Okay. Heimlich, CPR. Okay. Those are just words that could help you in real life when you're traveling, for example. Okay. All right. Um, repeat after me. So certain types of equipment, like a first aid kit, that's another very good word to know in English. First aid kit that looks like that with a little cross on it. Okay. So again, certain types of equipment like a first aid kit in case of injury or a mobile phone to call emergency services can be very useful as well as knowledge of how to help people like CPR in case of drowning as I previously mentioned or knowing the Heimlich maneuver if someone is choking on a piece of steak. Okay, those are some good words there. Um, and... Um, When you can make a connection to what you said, so CPR in case of drowning, as I previously mentioned, so I'm connecting this answer to um, this answer here, drowning, those will get you some good band scores. If you can make connections between your answers, then uh, you can uh, get a higher band score, okay? All right. Uh, so, uh, students, uh, let's go for one more question. Here we go. Have the ways people sought help these days changed compared to a generation before? So, have the ways people sought help these days changed compared to a generation before? Notice the word sought is the past participle of seek, okay? Navleen Saini says, yes, in former times, people mostly carried injured persons uh, to the doctor. However, nowadays, people have a myriad of opportunities to save people's life, such as calling an ambulance where the paramedics come to the injured person. Right, Navleen? Very good answer. Just elaborating a little bit more. Okay. For Dobbs says, of course, yes, it has transformed three decades before. People couldn't afford mobile services to call, uh, mobile devices to call emergency services. And nowadays, more individuals have better knowledge uh, of helping from YouTube. Uh, very good for Dobbs, yeah. So technology is definitely transforming the way that people seek help. And for Dobbs, good job for using the present perfect right away. Okay. Jatinder says there has been a great paradigm shift from the past in the way people help each other. People can ask for help on social media websites these days and also using new types of equipment which wasn't available before. Jatinder, really nice, okay? 
Hapsa says, nowadays people are more selfish, busy, and because of modern inventions, this makes them not care about each other as much compared to a generation before. Um, Hafsa, this is what I mentioned at the beginning of this class. Be very careful with understanding the question before you're answering. So have the ways people sought help these days changed, not have the way people help changed these days. Okay, it's a different question that you're answering. Jod Singh says, yes, there have been radical changes. Earlier, people were not aware of incidents where people needed help. But now with social media, there are social movements where others urge society for assistance. Yeah, Jod Singh, a little bit of correction there. Juan Pablo Avila says there have definitely been changes. Um, I can say that it has improved with technology. People can call the police or other emergency services for immediate assistance using mobile phones and even sending pictures of the situation. Very good. Okay. So anytime you're asked about a time comparison, so in the future, technology is usually a good go-to answer. So indeed, technology has revolutionized the way people can get help. Devices like mobile phones have saved thousands of lives over the over the past <coughs> excuse me over the past 20 years as people are not only able to call for immediate assistance but also look up emergency procedures like the Heimlich Maneuver. Okay. What I was just talking about. All right. So again, making some connections, okay, with the Heimlich uh, maneuver. I'm using the not only but also correlative conjunction again adding richness and emphasis to my communication. So here we go students repeat after me. Indeed technology has revolutionized the way people can get help. Devices like mobile phones have saved thousands of lives over the past 20 years as people are not only able to call for immediate assistance, but also look up emergency procedures like the Heimlich maneuver, what I was just referring to a moment ago. Okay, I know it's tricky to keep all of these tips that I keep giving you in mind, but keep practicing them. Okay, keep practicing them. Here are some questions for homework. Let's talk about troubleshooting. People these days often need to troubleshoot problems with their electronic devices. Why is this? What is the best way to find solutions? Who are the professionals that deal with troubleshooting on a daily basis? Why are their jobs important? Students, those questions you can answer for me, record it on your mobile phone and send it to me at adrian at it, e, help. Dot com. That's my name, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. And then I can get back to you with a score estimate. One more time, new app is available in your Apple and Play Store, Google Play Store. Look for that new app on Android and iOS. The name of the app is Academic I-E-L-T-S Help. Look for this shield. 
You can join our premium course on our website or on the app. They're linked, they're connected to each other. So you only need to make the purchase on one or the other. And then they'll be linked up. Um, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com for the general version of the exam. Our websites, they look like this. This is the general with the green background. Click that big red button to join us there. And with the blue background, click that big red button to join us there. Spend a couple dollars. Save yourself a lot of time and frustration looking for good IELTS training. That's it for today, for this week. Thank you so much for your contributions, for working hard, for staying the course. Keep studying. Don't give up. You're smart people. Believe in yourselves. We believe in you. I will be back next Thursday on the 15th, continuing with more IELTS speaking and reading. Bye for now, everyone. Have a great rest of your weekend and a good start to your week.